The Warriors just beat the Lakers 121 to 106 in game five and now trail the series 3 2. Give the Lakers credit. They did not lay down. They showed up to San Francisco, played hard, shot 48% from the field and 37% from three, and still lost by 15. And in their valiant effort to put away the champs while they had him on the ropes, they may have lost Anthony Davis. He took an elbow from Kevon Looney in the fourth quarter to the temple to the head and looked concussed. He apparently left the court on a on a wheelchair. They they wheelchaired him out and had a a towel over his head. He looked messed up. I mean, now to be fair, it looked like Draymond Green was concussed in the last game, but that's a big one. We're going to have to see that. We're going to have to see what happens there. Did, did the Lakers lose Anthony Davis in their attempt to put the champs away? Because you can't just take game five for granted. You can't say, well, we get them in game six. No, these are the champs. If they're on the ropes, if they're dazed, put them away. And the Lakers tried, and they couldn't do it. They lost by 15 because the Warriors didn't have a bad shooting night. They shot 51% from the field and 37% from uh, three-point line. But there's a lot of reasons for Warriors fans to feel encouraged by this performance. It's not just that they played good defense. It's that, let's start with Andrew Wiggins. Andrew Wiggins kicked ass in this game. Andrew Wiggins finally stepped up and was the second option he needs to be because Klay Thompson is cold. More on Klay Thompson in a minute. Andrew Wiggins finally looks like he's in peak physical condition after missing a couple of months due to personal reasons. Don't know what happened there came back right when the playoffs started and really wasn't in game shape. Now it looks to me like he's in game shape, but in this game, which was an elimination game for the Warriors, he played almost 36 minutes. He took 18 shots. Thank you, Andrew. This guy's been chilling, taking like 13 shots a game, took 18 shots, made 10 of them, took five threes, took two, made three, all three of his free throws, had seven rebounds and five assists and a steal. Thank you, Andrew. You can do this. You're that good of a player. Like, Andrew Wiggins legitimately is one hell of a player. He's an excellent defensive player. And as he showed tonight, when he asserts himself, he's an excellent, efficient offensive player as well. He just needs to assert himself. And it took the Warriors being down 3-1 and him, I don't know, maybe getting a couple of weeks, two, three weeks of playing actual games and getting the game shape. But if this is how he's going to play from here on out, 18 shots a night, 55% from the field, seven rebounds a night, the Warriors can come back. Also, if Anthony Davis is hurt, but that's, we'll find out more about that. So Andrew Wiggins was assertive. The person who really set the tone in the game, who was the most assertive was Draymond Green, who I, I'm not a fan of the Warriors. I'm not a fan of any team. I'm a fan of Draymond Green. I love Draymond Green because he's not a complete basketball player. He wears his limitations on his sleeve. And yet in this, game, in this game, he was the most aggressive. He was the one pushing the tempo from the beginning. He took 11 shots in this game, which is a good number for him, and made seven of them. Seven! He made mid-range shots. He even made a three. And what I like is he's not a good three-point shooter. Take one or two a game, maybe, but if, it's, if you're wide open... Take a step in and hit the mid-range shot. It's almost like a floater for him. He also had 10 rebounds, 4 assists, 2 steals. Hell of a player. I still say he's a Hall of Famer. He set the tone. He was the tone setter in this game. Andrew Riggins rose to the occasion. If you're a Warrior fan looking for reasons to think they can pull off this comeback in this series, those two guys. Draymond finally kicked his game into overdrive. He'd been playing kind of passive. People have been acting like, is he afraid to get, you know, scrappy with the Lakers because he's real friends with LeBron James. Well, he was all up in Anthony Davis's face today. And Andrew Wiggins, he's got to keep playing like this. So th those are reasons to be encouraged for Warrior fans. Also, Steph Curry, 3 of 11 in this game from 3 after 3 of, th three of 14 in the last game. So he's really not shooting well. 27% from 3 in this game, which might make you feel like, hey, maybe he's tired. But he was 9 of... 13 from inside the arc. He was masterful around the hoop. The Warriors did a great job of bringing Anthony Davis to the perimeter. Steph Curry would blow by him. Eight assists, two turnovers. Someone on my channel said he wasn't a great passer. <clears throat> Ryan Hensley. 
Love you, Ryan. He's a great passer, an all-time great passer, and the greatest point guard of all time, the greatest offensive player of all time. And the reason, the only reason this series is a series right now is because the Lakers shot a bunch of foul shots in the first couple of games, and Steph Curry's been relatively cold from three. But I don't know if that's going to continue. In this game, the Warriors shot 15 free throws, and so did the Lakers. Who, who predicted that that would even out? It's kind of like the NBA messes around a little bit at the beginning of a series and then gets serious. More players who were encouraging for the Warriors. Gary Payton II started again, played almost 30 minutes, about damn time. He's that good. Four or five from the field, six rebounds. Needs to keep playing that much. Plus 25. Gary Payton II. Hell of a player. Kavon Looney seems, I mean, Gary Payton II threw up in his mouth in the last game. There's been some virus going around in this team. I don't know. He looks fine. Kavon Looney looked fine in this game. Overriding theme. The Warriors did not look tired at all. They looked gassed in LA two days ago. Now they look fresh. Kavon Looney looked fresh. Eight rebounds in 20 minutes. Moses Moody looked really good. He needs to play more. Nine minutes, two of two, two, of two from three. I trust Moses Moody. I like him more than I like. Should we get into the uh the not so good of this team. Well, let's start with Clay Thompson. He just doesn't have it right now. Three of twelve from the field, two of six. Seems like afraid of contact. He got six rebounds, only two free throws. He needs to seek out contact more. He's just playing kind of soft. I don't get it. But he's been real cold. I mean, he's a he's a champion. He's an all time great player, a Hall of Famer too. I wouldn't tell him to stop shooting, but it's just weird to see. It's been a while. Um, and then Jordan Poole, dude. Jordan Poole. 5 of 14, 1 of 6 from 3, 11 points. He makes one three with his feet set and then immediately gets the ball and like takes some heat check, hero ball, fade away, one step leaner. Like, dude, what are you thinking, man? They did everything they could to get him back in rhythm and it didn't work. They played him 22 minutes to get him some confidence. It didn't work. I don't think they can play him in game six. I don't think they can play him. I think he is the arsonist of this team. And then there's Dante DiVincenzo who plays 20, 12 minutes and does nothing, just nothing. Zero points, one shot. He just, I, he gets cardio on the court, which is great. Also, Kaminga played in, in um, Jonathan Kaminga played in crunch time and hit two shots, including a three. Don't think that's enough to get actually get him on the court in LA in game six, but that's good to see. It's interesting going forward for game six. It, lo looking at this game, it felt like the Warriors can win in game seven if they force it to game seven. That's what you have to be um, encouraged about if you're a Warriors fan. You can win this game. You can win this series at home because these role players, Wiggins, Peyton, Moody, Looney, they all step up at home. Can you win game six on the road? Well, is AD going to play? That's the. Is AD going to play? Yes, and at what capacity? And are Clay Thompson and Steph Curry finally going to start hitting threes? Because I, I, I can't remember Clay and Steph going through this much of a drought, and uh, it's probably going to end pretty soon. If those two hit shots in game six and the free throw disparity is even like it is in this game, and freaking Lonnie freaking Walker doesn't go for 15 in the fourth quarter, I'm thinking the Warriors are going to win game six. So, you know, this, this is far from over. It's really just getting started. Again, you got to give the Lakers credit for trying to put the Warriors away. You can't just give them game five. This is the champions. And I want to use a boxing metaphor. Like, when you have the champions on the ropes, you don't just let the round expire. You go for the knockout. And the Lakers tried, and they failed, and it may have cost them Anthony Davis. And in the in the process, Andrew Wiggins has gotten his fitness up and his confidence up. Draymond Green has got his confidence up big time. And we've seen that Jordan Poole is unfreaking playable. Put him on the bench in game seven. I feel like the Warriors have a seven man rotation. They got their starting lineup of Draymond Curry, Peyton, Clay Thompson. Draymond Curry, Play Peyton, Clay Thompson, Wiggins. With Looney and Moody off the bench. Looney and Moody. Looney and Moody off the bench. Do you trust DiVincenzo in a game six with all of the long... I mean, yeah, he could run around and do nothing. Jordan Poole does worse than nothing. My God. I don't want to come down too hard on the 23-year-old, though. 
But yeah, I trust seven players in game six. Who's going to shoot well in game six? I'm picking the Warriors in game six, frankly. LeBron James was limping a little bit at the end. He looks old. Anthony Davis, I'm not going to call him soft, but I don't think Lonnie Walker is going to save him any more times. I don't think the free throw line is going to save him any more times. I think the, the Lakers are in a lot of trouble. But to me, comes down to game six. The winner of game six wins the series in the sense that if the Lakers win, the series is over. And if, if the Warriors win, they're going to win game six at home. Let's see if I'm right. 